Hi, this is Andrew at Westchester Residential Opportunities, and this video is part of our series of videos on the basics of the fair housing laws. The normal caveats and disclaimers apply. This presentation is being prepared in April of 2020 and may not be accurate on any other date. Also, we're not providing legal advice in this video. If you need legal advice, please engage a lawyer. Today, we're talking about fair lending. Lots of laws apply to credit transactions, and we're not talking about most of them here. We are a fair housing organization, so when we think about fair lending, we're really focused on anti-discrimination laws as they apply to mortgage transactions. And at the federal level, that's the Fair Housing Act, which applies to housing transactions, like getting a mortgage, and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, often referred to by its acronym ECOA, which applies to credit transactions, also like getting a mortgage. There are equivalent laws at the state and local levels that can come into play, but in this presentation, we're principally focusing on the federal laws. You may have seen a chart like this before. It lists out the protected characteristics. ECOA refers to the characteristics protected by that law as protected bases. In the fair housing world, typically they are referred to as protected classes or protected characteristics or even protected groups. We'll use the terms pretty interchangeably. They're all referring to the same thing. We're located in Westchester County in New York State, so we think about the federal protections, but also the state and county protections that apply in our area. I note as you look at the federally protected classes that ACOA adds three that are not in the Federal Fair Housing Act. Source of income, marital, marital status, and age. Those are all picked up by the New York State Fair Housing Law as well, but the overlay of a COA to a mortgage transaction means that you also have a federal claim for discrimination in lending based on those characteristics. The fair lending laws say essentially that a lender cannot treat any person differently because of their protected characteristics. And that treatment can come in many subtle and not so subtle forms. The most obvious differential treatment is here in the first few bullets, refusing to extend credit, or applying different standards in determining whether to extend credit. So for example, that could be using a different credit score requirement or a different standard for proving income. Or varying the terms or conditions of credit, which could include the loan amount, interest rate, duration, type of loan, fees, and down payment or closing cost requirements. So for example, we have an enforcement actions that we pursued based on lenders offering to lend a lower amount to a woman on maternity leave than they would to a similarly situated woman who was at work. But the law also covers more subtle points as well, like in the last two bullets here. So the law prohibits failing to provide information or services or providing different information or services regarding any aspect of the lending process, including credit availability, application procedures, or lending standards. It also prohibits discouraging or selectively encouraging applicants with respect to inquiries about or applications for a loan. And those points mean that every aspect of a lending agent's interaction with a borrower or prospective applicant matters, including the softer elements like what information the agent requests of the applicant, what information the agent offers the applicant, and what level of inquiry or invest investigation is conducted into their creditworthiness. For example, does the lender make assumptions about the creditworthiness of certain individuals based on prote protected classes? Take one real-world example. In 2016, the federal government brought a charge against Bank of America based on disparate treatment of white and Hispanic testers. And part of what's interesting here is that much of the discriminatory conduct was not overt, but rather incidental things like whether and how quickly the loan officer called the customer back or how effectively the loan officer pursued or didn't pursue the customer, and last, how much useful information the loan officer provided the customer. That matter cost Bank of America several hundreds of thousands of dollars in settlement. So I also wanted to touch on a few specific types of discriminatory conduct, just because you may hear these terms thrown around and it's useful to know what they do and don't mean in the fair lending context. Redlining, is illegal under both the Fair Housing Act and ACOA. Redlining is a disparate treatment in which a lender provides unequal access to credit 
based on the characteristics of the residents of the area in which the person resides or in which the residential property to be mortgaged is located. The term redlining comes from maps that were created starting in the 1930s by entities like the Homeowners Loan Corporation, like this map here, which is a map of Philadelphia. These maps were created to tell banks which neighborhoods to lend to. It divides the city into neighborhoods categorized as best, still desirable, declining, or hazardous. Hazardous, and that's the red areas, hence the term redlining, um, tended to be typically where the brown and the black people lived. Reverse redlining is another term you may hear, and that references a type of just predatory lending practice in which the lending providers target a demographic or regional area to sell a bad product, meaning an unsuitable or a disadvantageous product. That can mean a higher rate, higher risk, higher cost, worse terms and conditions. Steering is another term we hear a lot. And the classic sense of steering in the fair housing world is in this first bullet. Steering towards a region or area based on perceived protected characteristics. For example, a realtor who thinks you'll feel at home in a neighborhood because you're white and the families in this neighborhood are white. But in the fair lending context, steering has other meanings as well. In particular, certain predatory or discriminatory loan practices. Similar to reverse redlining, these can be predatory practices like in the last bullet, basically pushing a product on clients that's less beneficial to the client but more profitable to the lender or the agent. But it can also be more obviously discriminatory conduct like in the second bullet. For example, assuming a conventional loan product is suitable for a white customer, but that an FHA loan is appropriate for a black or Hispanic borrower. Thanks for joining us today. WRO's Fair Housing Department is actively engaged in community outreach and education to make sure housing providers and lenders and the public understand fair housing and fair lending laws. And WRO also actively investigates compliance with the law. We analyze zoning laws and building policies. We test housing providers and lenders. When appropriate, WRO brings enforcement actions against providers who break the law. Thanks again for watching our video. If you are aware of housing or lending discrimination, please reach out to us. As we're creating this video during the pandemic, we are not currently in the office. The easiest way to reach us is by email. We have a staff directory on our website. You can see the address on the screen here and email anyone in the Fair Housing Department and we'll get back to you. And while you're visiting that website, please take a moment to support WRO by clicking on the donate button. Housing is always essential and we're here to help. Please like, subscribe, and share this video and follow us on social media.